South Africa. Welcome to Afternoon Express. I'm Bonnie Woolley. Today is a great day in the loft. It's a day we've waited for with great anticipation. First up, we chat to prolific, iconic author, Dr. Zeg Da, and also we check out the first ever musical theatre production focusing on the life and times of Miriam Makeba, which is a collaboration between the University of the Western Cape and the University of Missouri in the USA. And for Winner Home on Afternoon Express today, we're inspired by wallpaper and surface designer Robin Sprong, whose work has been featured in countries all over the world. Danilo is all over the kitchen. Indeed, welcome to a terrible Tuesday right on Afternoon Express. And I'll tell you why it's terrible, because Tuesday is one of those days that's not quite the brand new week with all that energy. It's not no. quite anywhere near towards the weekend. But we're going to hopefully keep you guys company right on Afternoon Express. My name is Danilo Aquisto, and I've kind of got my kitchen mom with me today, because last <laughs> night she hosted me for uh, her dinner supper club, which she's hosting at the Larder, and you made this delicious roast. But today, life has thrown us lemons, and we're making a lemon yes. curd and ricotta cake. That's it, with, a, with, a, with a few coffees or teas on the side. Yummy! So it should be absolutely amazing. If you guys want to cook along with us, you can find the recipe and the shopping list on our website, afternoonexpress.co.za. Okay. You also find uh, all the other recipes we make on Afternoon Express right over there. Good afternoon. Welcome to the show. Bonnie's on standby with our first guest. Born in the Eastern Cape in 1948, he spent his early childhood in Soweto and finished his school education in Lesotho, where he joined his father in exile. He studied and worked in South Africa, Lesotho, the United Kingdom and the United States, and is a prolific writer of plays, novels, poems, and articles for academic journals and newspapers. His creative work includes paintings, theatre and film productions, and he now spends his time writing and teaching based in Athens in Ohio in the United States. Joining us in the loft is Zeg Tumda. Welcome. Yeah. It's yeah, so lovely to have much. you with us. Well, it's my pleasure. Yeah. yeah. So let me tell you a very fascinating story of how you've ruined me, basically. Oh, so, my goodness. Uh, yeah. So a couple <laughs> of months after publishing my book, yeah. uh, you tweeted me and you said you had just finished reading my book and yes. that you loved it and you were so proud of me. And then you proceeded to say, I should never stop writing. Exactly. What pressure? I mean, what's mm. a girl to do? That's <laughs> what I felt about uh, that book. And then my wife read it too. She's a psychotherapist and felt that this is such an important book that she prescribes it, you know, uh, even to, 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 to her clients. Wow. Well, yeah. needless to say, every time I sit down to write, your words ring in my mind and yes. um, you really inspire me. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so let's talk about your early years. So mm. your father played a big role in your life, a big influential role as he was one of the founders of the ANC Youth League. Right. And his students came up with the name for one of our most loved um, soccer teams, the Orlando exactly, Pirates. Exactly, yes. Because at the time they were reading Treasure Chest. And, uh, I mean, Treasure Island, sorry. Yes, yes. Treasure Island, and you know that um, it is about pirates and so on. So that's where they got the name. Wow. Yeah. And, I mean, your father being so political, I'm surprised mm. you weren't swayed into public politics, although politics is a thread that runs throughout your work. Yeah, well, I actually did go into, into politics for quite some time. Actually, from the time I was at high school. Mm. There would be times when my parents thought that I was at school, and yet I was running around with older politicians, you know, holding rallies and, and so on. Yeah. But then, of course, I think I outgrew politics mm. for the better. Well, for the better. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Nelson Mandela used to babysit you. Yes. Yes. Indeed. <laughs> what do you remember of those years? And well, you... you know, what I remember mostly about those years, it was a time when my father was elsewhere. I think he was saving his articles to be a lawyer. And at the time, he was the president of the Youth League and Mandela was his secretary, if I remember well. And uh, then, since my father could not look after us, uh, and my mother was elsewhere working as a nurse, mm -hmm. then uh, Mandela came uh, in the Eastern Cape and took us to, to his home in um, Orlando East at yeah. the time. Mm -hmm. uh, at the time they were living on it. Yeah, so uh, for, for some time, me and my two younger brothers uh, lived with him. Wow. And what do you remember of him? Well, I mean, time? I only remember him firstly as a very strict uh, uh, father at home, you mm -hmm. know. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, he, he was very strict. But I also remember him then because sometimes we, we, we used to follow these people or he would take us to some of the meetings that they held. 
He was very radical and he would shout down speakers. Sometimes, you know, in, in our language, when they say, we are valizos. We are valizos. Why are valizos? You know, they, they, they would actually shut down um, uh, th those meetings. So it's quite amazing that he developed into a very, a very tolerant uh, uh, politician yeah. in, in his older age. Yeah. Because he was completely impatient um, in those days. Maybe prison tamed him, you know. Yes, yeah. yes. Mm. Your first short story, Ikri Khala was eh? published yeah. when you were 15. Yes. Do you remember what that feeling was like? You, you were well, writing I mean, it in English? It, yeah, because I wrote it when I was 13, just before I went to exile. Um, and then I went to exile in Lesotho, uh, actually to join my father. So it was on my second year in exile that they sent me the, this, uh, the, this magazine with my story. Hmm. And I took it to school and showed everybody. Unfortunately, you see, I was in exile in Lesotho where they speak Lesotho. Right. And the story wa wa was in Kosa, so people could not read it. Could not read it. B but at least they saw my name there. Yes, yeah, yes. <laughs> A lot yeah. of your, your work reads as history lessons. Right. Disguised as novels. Yes. Do you do you have a, a passion for passing on history? Is that a well? A I mean, legacy? I have a passion for the past, you know, because um, I believe that you know the past is always a strong presence hmm. in our present. Um, we are shaped by the past. We are who we are. Actually, our whole identity, you know, it depends on the past. We are in fact, what we remember, wow. you see. So it is, you know, it, it, so for me then, you see, what happened in the past is very important. But of course, I'm not a historian. I'm a novelist. I depend on other historians, you see, who have researched that. But sometimes when I find a gap, I also do the, 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 the research myself. Mm -hmm. And as a novelist, of course, my work is to create fiction. Yes. But I always make it a point that the fiction that I, I create interacts with, with, with history, you know, that has not been distorted. In other words, I never change anything in as far as history is concerned. Only my fictional characters, you know, uh, have their lives woven into history wow. and interact with that history. Yeah. Anyone uh, who's read your book, Ways of Dying, mm -hmm. is, it's, it's a memorable book. It's oh, unforgettable. Yeah, so I've been told. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tell us about Toloki. How did, he, how did you form him? Who is he? How did I form him? Well, you know, that was another accident. Well, I mean, my life is a series of accidents, <laughs> actually. I was in Durham. Uh, in England as a writer in residence then, where I was supposed to write a play in celebration of the 900th anniversary of the Durham Cathedral. Right. You see, which was a, a Norman Cathedral. So when I, I was there, Cotier had just published his novel, Age of Iron. Hmm. When I saw it at a bookstore there, I bought it. And as, as I was reading it, I was fascinated by a character they call Vacuel, who, 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 who stank, you know, he has a very strong smell. Stench. Mm. Yeah, a yeah, stench. In fact, that, that, that's the right, yeah. So I thought to myself, if Cotier can write a character who, who stinks like this, so can I. <laughs> that's how it started. Mm -hmm. But of course, mine had to stink for different reasons. So that, that's how Dologi came into being. He's, he's an a angel of death. That's why he stinks, wow. you see. Wow. Because he goes from funeral to funeral, <laughs> mourning the dead. Wow. So we're going to take a short break, but when we come back, we're going to talk more about more of your work right. and um, the whale caller being turned into a film. OK, yeah. yeah. That's more to find out. All right. Thank you. Yeah, that's great. So yeah. if you have any questions or comments for Zakes, then tweet us at Afternoon Chats using the official hashtag Afternoon Express. Comment on our Facebook page or call us live on 083-913-3728. After the break, we continue our conversation with Zakes. And in the kitchen, we're making a lemon curd and ricotta cake. We'll be right back.
A warm welcome back to Afternoon Express. So we're in the kitchen today with Sonia and we're making something so delicious. And what is exactly is it called? Because I've heard you use a word that I only link to a nursery rhyme. Lemon curd and ricotta cake. Whenever I hear the word curd, I just think of the nursery rhyme. We can probably sing this one together. So, <laughs> little Miss Muffet <laughs> sat, sat on her tuffet eating, eating her curds and whey. <laughs> down came a spider and, and sat, sat down, down beside her. And and ate all the cookies or something? I can't remember the rest of the nursery something rhyme. Something away. Awkward. Okay, so anything I know about curd, what exactly is curd? So curds, it's when you're making butter, so you, you're separating the curds from the whey, so it's the fat from the whey, oh. the liquid that comes off, which is a buttermilk. So you're making a fatty lemon, basically, yeah, but into it's, a you cake. do the same thing when you're making ricotta, so <laughs> okay. um, the whey's get separated from it, which is the, the cream that we're going to ah. put on our lovely cake. Yummy! Top. It's got yeah. a nice really flavour, summery flavour to it, because we refuse to get into winter mode yet no, on Afternoon Express. No, absolutely refuse. So how do we get started? Okay, so we've got some egg yolks in there, and we're mm -hmm. going to whip it with some beautiful salati caster sugar. Oh, I see, because okay. caster sugar is obviously the one that dissolves a little bit Much easier. Much quicker, so. yeah. So get on your mixer, which is our beautiful new oh. How high must I put it on? Go for it. Go for it. <laughs> as fast as I can. Yeah. And obviously the nice thing about using the caster snow is that one of those ones you can keep in the cupboard for lots of different exactly. purposes. It makes everything. great icing sugar. It makes everything that you want to know. Everything. Okay. So we're just creaming it, getting so you'll see the change in colour, getting a nice smooth. Oh, it goes white, um, lighter and lighter. Exactly. It's called to pale, to cream it to pale. So that's you can whip for another minute or two, but that's awesome. Cool. And then what we now we've put air into the egg yolks, we've creamed the sugar into the into the yolks, and now we've got some gorgeous egg whites, oh, which have yummy. been beautifully whipped, it and we're going like to fold it into there with everything else. So let's can you open up the mixer for me? I don't know if I know how to do okay, that. Me, to be honest, let me show let me you. Just, so no. this dude over here, that guy over there, okay, you just there lift it up there, Simple. and then you can just get all this gorgeous stuff off because we don't want to waste any. Never, okay. never in this loft. No. Especially when it comes to cakes. No, 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 we can't waste any cook. Nothing. Okay, can you jiggle it out? Do you want to need some no, help? No, that I can do. Okay. All right. So, we pop it over there. So oh. Pop it down. Just on the board there, and then I can reach. And then we're going to fold in some egg, egg whites. So, we put in a little bit. And what we do, because we've got two different textures marrying up. Oh, we're making a nice mess. Um, we fold a little bit in here. It's called to, to, to loosen. Just to get the two textures to marry together. Otherwise, okay. it'll... It's sort of light fluff in that dense sort of creamed. Exactly. So Because you want to keep all the air that you whipped into that. Yes, I see. But you don't want to ruin it by putting it all in once. Okay, okay that makes so sense there you go, done. So now we're going to put in four tablespoons of um, lemon curd. Yeah, that I can do for you. If you can do. Now, always one thing I wanted to ask chefs, because they frustrate me so much when I see them on TV, put four tablespoons in. Are those heaped or flat tablespoons? You should really do flat, but because it's cake, we're going to go for heaped. Okay, so that counts so as a for, tablespoon. Yeah, yeah, I'll go okay. for about half. Yum, we're going for the yum, yum factor. We've got oh. 25 grams of poppy seeds, we're going to chuck in there. You said four tablespoons, eh? Four tablespoons, oh. go, 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 go. And then we've got three tablespoons of self raising flour and a, um, a teaspoon of baking powder oh. and we're adding the extra baking powder because we're dealing with whites and we're dealing with um, nuts we need an extra, extra whippage to yeah oh. so we sprinkle all of that in so it's basically making a lemon poppy seed muffin massively yes okay, exactly delicious massive Okay. What is this now that you're throwing This in is here? your almonds, sorry, ground almonds. Now you can use ground almonds, you can use ground hazelnuts, ground pecans, oh. but your, um, your nuts um, will vary in colour. So if you want a nice white light cake, then the almonds are the best solution. Uh, pecans will give it a wonderful flavour, but it'll just be a little bit darker. darker. Okay. okay, but that's okay. And, and then... You have to obviously mix that all up yes, together, add yes. the rest of our whites to combine it all. We can just... There we go, slide in nicely. And do you want to fold? Or I'd love I to fold, because okay. I think folding is quite difficult. Uh, it was one of those arts that I've never, because I'm too impatient. So you can um, do it in a figure of, figure of eight. <laughs> oh, I see. There like you go, this. so you can kind of get oh, to the bottom. Oh, okay, 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 okay. okay if you're going to give me a task, let me complete yeah, it. There you go, okay, nicely done, go. nicely done. <laughs> Okay. And you don't want to over the, the... You want to keep the fluffy. Yes, you want to keep the fluffy. So the, the trick with making a good cake is to sort of undermix. Mm. You don't want to undermix it so you have flour clumps. Yes. But you don't want to overmix over it, it so you've lost all your air. So that's okay. that's good. That's done. Okay, just leave it like done. that. That's done, 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 done. Okay, we're what gonna... What you call it? A cake mix? Cake done. batter. Batter. Pet batter. And we don't want to lose any of these yummy bits, so we'll spatula no, I don't think you could all. have done any batter with this one. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> You're too funny. I try. Too You've funny. got to have fun in the kitchen. I think that's one of the biggest lessons that I don't think chefs ever tell you. Is you've got to make sure that you enjoy making the dish. Because everyone talks about health and making sure all your right ingredients are in there. Have some fun while you're in there. I don't you know how out? to have fun in the kitchen, actually. I've oh, trust no me. Your food comes out with so much love. You do know how to have fun. It's always got so much.
much behind it. So. And you're a big believer in organics, so I a know that you believe in A big believer in, in organics and lots of smiles and, and in the kitchen, definitely. Good. How beautiful is this bowl? It looks amazing. Yeah, it's so nice to be able to see it. See and what it you... captures can, a lot. There we go. I'll try not to splish it all over in myself. Mm. Okay, and then what we're going to do is just smooth it down without trying to lose all the bubbles. Cool. And cool. we'll that goes oven. for how long? 20 minutes. 20 Done. minutes of what degrees? Uh, 180? 180 degrees. So we'll show you what that looks like a little bit later on on Afternoon Express. So you right now can go to the website, afternoonexpress.co.za. Mm. There you can find the recipe and the shopping list for all the amazing recipes, but you can make this cake at home yourself. Uh, speaking about things that are amazing, you're pretty much a doctor in the kitchen. We've got a professor on the couch. Ooh. <laughs> Picking up where we left off before the break, we're still on the couch with Mr. Zaxum Da. So I'm reading your memoir at the moment. Um, okay. Yes, yes, yeah. it's called Sometimes There's a Void. I hope you haven't reached the embarrassing parts yet. Um, no, I haven't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't. Yeah. Sometimes there's a void. Mm. Void. What void? Well, I mean, it's a void that uh, is always there, you know, that perhaps drives me to create. Hmm. I've realized that perhaps in all the things that I'm trying to create, you know, be it a painting, be it a song that I compose, be it a novel that I write or some silly poem that, that I, you know, I'm trying to fill in a void. And it does, you know, get filled in, you know, as I continue to create the work and then maybe mm. finish that work. Mm. but. Again, it will it, it will be there, you know. It will appear again. Yeah, it, it is insatiable. It, it is always there. It's always hungry. You may satisfy it for a while. Yes. Then again, you know, stories demand to be told. It haunts you. Wow. You know, yeah. Yeah. And speaking of work and stories haunting you, I mean, your levels of of productivity are high for somebody who's so busy, also a professor uh -huh. at the University of Ohio. You do so much. How do you just turn out the books? No sooner are we reading your last chapter and yeah. the next book is <laughs> Well, you, you know, uh, there are so many stories that they drive me to tell them. Mm -hmm. Yes. And in fact, they also tell me how to tell them. Wow. That is why you'll see that each book I write is quite different in structure, in form, mm -hmm. and, you know, mm -hmm. um, it is because the story itself tells you how to tell it. Yeah. Yeah. I chatted to a writer friend of mine earlier this morning and I was saying to him, I'm so nervous, oh my gosh, what would oh you ask goodness. him, what would you ask yeah. him? And, um, yeah. and, I said to, and I said to her, I want to ask about his writing privilege. She said, don't do that. Writers hate process questions. Why not? But I can't sit with you and not ask you what your process is. Actually, I like process questions. Yay! You see? <laughs> and I, I, I always answer mm -hmm. process questions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what is your process? Is there a ritual around it? Do you just sit down and Not write? Not really. You How know, do stories come? You know, I write everywhere and anywhere. Mm -hmm. I write mostly at home. Uh, I only teach two, two days a week, okay. you know, uh, two hours each one of those days. So I'm at home most of the time. But then um, my, my wife, you know, is, is away for the whole day. She, she leaves very early in the morning and comes back very late at night because she works in a different town. And I spend all that time then, you know, also doing ho housework. And I'm the guy who will be taking kids to the, because we, we still do have young kids, mm. my, my stepkids, um, to, you know, for dance, for sports and so on. Yeah. And I'm the guy who will then be cooking uh, because I do most of the, well, mostly uh, during the week. Um, and I write in between all those things. I don't need solitude to write. Wow. In fact, I don't think I would be able to write in solitude. Wow. I write in the course of living a life, you know, with my family. And a lot of the things that happen, mm -hmm. you know, they, you know, uh, find their way into, into, story. into the novels that I write. Yeah. Maybe something that one of the kids says or something, I say, hey, I said, that's brilliant. Mm. I'm going to use that line somewhere. Mm. Or it then suggests another line or, or, or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. There's so many of your novels we could talk mm. about that are really special. But one yes. that's really close to your heart is The Whale Caller, which is now being turned into a film, which yes. you also produced. Yes. Tell us about yes. that. Well, you know, The Whale Caller 
as I find Zola Maseko was movie in all respects, not only because he directed it, but because he was so patient, and um, you know he got the rights for this movie many years, almost ten years ago. Wow. It took him that long to to finally see it produced. Mm. I am the scriptwriter and the co I mean and, and a co-producer. Why it took that long is because every time you know he would get an organization that says, okay, we'll give you funds, including our IDC here, yeah, will give you funds, provided you cast a, an international actor, or even if they don't say international, they will say a bankable actor, hmm. you see. And he was very stubborn, he refused. And he was adamant. Yeah. He, he was adamant, yeah, you know, that, yeah. um, well, they were saying that precisely because he was making an, what he feels is a movie that will have an international market. And therefore, they felt that an international star would sell it better because his budget was much higher than the local movie, you know, uh, for which they don't make such a demand. Yeah. Yeah. You were quoted mentioning recently that there's a literary boom that's taking place yes, in South Africa. Yes. And wh why are you calling it a boom? Well, it is a boom because there's so much creativity. Hmm. So many people are writing books, and you are, one, you are part of that boom. Mm, I'm part it? of the boom. You are part of the boom. Um, <laughs> there are many books that are being written now. More so in the past 10 years, you mentioned earlier. As in, well. the, in the past 10 years, there have been more novels by black writers, and of course, other kinds of books, non fiction. Uh, than ever before in the history, in fact, in the whole history wow. of South Africa, wow. in terms of quantity. What do you believe is yeah. propelling it right now? Well, I, I, I think, you know, the political environment uh, 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 does that. And um, the fact that, because even me, actually, I, I only started writing novels uh, just around that period when there was a transition from the apartheid um, a, a, a system to the dispensation that we, we have now. Yeah. Because during apartheid, you know, we're writing under that pressure of apartheid, and the pressure of apartheid also uh, forced us, you know, to to address apartheid in our writings. Mm -hmm. That's why, you know, for that, you know, a lot of our writings uh, during that period, uh, you know it will be predominant, it will be the predominant uh, theme. Yeah. So the demise of apartheid freed the imagination of the artist, including the writer. Yeah. That is why now you see all this creativity that is happening. That is happening. Yeah. And you're in the country to launch your latest Little Sons. Little Sons, I'm coming yes. to the launch on Thursday. Okay. Yes. That what is it about? Really nice. Just briefly. Well, Little Sons is a historical novel. Mm. It's actually based on the story of my family. Uh, my great, 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 I think there are three greats or four, um, grandfather, who was the king of Amamponomise uh, in a town called Umbu, in the former Transkei, who then uh, assassinated a British magistrate, part of the contestation of power that was happening those days. You see, this was in 1880. Uh, Actually, 1879, because then there was a war um, between Amampondo Mise and yes. the British. It's, yes. it's known as the War of Hope. Uh, and then he had to, he, he was defeated in that war, and he had to take exile in Lesotho, where he was for 20 years. They, they, they captured him finally, and he went to trial in Grahamstown, but fortunately he won that case. Yeah, yeah. Now, that history is all in this book. Mm -hmm. But of course, this is not a history book, it's a novel. It's a novel. And therefore, we have a story, I mean, a fictional story of Malangana, who is in love with, with, with Mtwagazi, who was an Umtwa woman, son, Bushman. Yeah. Who then, before they get married, has to, you know, then this war breaks out. So, so he has to go to exile with this king, Kodum Yeah. You know, so the story is 
actually about his search when he comes back for, from exile after 20 years, searching for the love of his life, wow. namely Mtwagas. Wow. Yes. Wow, thank you so much. Can't wait to read it. And it's an absolute honor to have had you in the loft today. You're not going away. We're making you something special in the kitchen. Oh, okay. Well, uh, I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. We'll also be giving away a, a copy of Little Sons a bit later on, so keep mm. your phones handy. And after the break, we take a look at the first musical theatre production honoring Miriam McEver's life ever made. And we'll be taking your questions or comments for Zexam Da. Tweet us at Afternoon Chat using the official hashtag Afternoon Express. Comment on our Facebook page or call us live on 083 913 3728. We'll We'll be right back. Welcome back to Afternoon Express, live on SABC3. Now we turn our attention to yet another South African icon, Miriam Mageba, singer and civil activist, is widely known as the woman who brought African music to the Western world. Songs like Pata Pata and Malaika stand the test of time, and after her passing in 2008, her legacy still inspires today. Now, a collaboration between the University of the Western Cape and the University of Missouri in the US sees the first ever musical theatre production focusing on the life and times of Mama Africa. Take a look. It came about over four years ago when two institutions, the University of Western Cape and the University of Missouri, started some kind of a collaboration. And who else but Miriam Akiba, who basically um, lived in the USA, was part of the civil rights movement, was part of the South African struggle. The story has never been told and is a world icon. And we have to keep her vision and her dream alive. We look back at her music and we wonder, my God, there's a lot to be studied in terms of her contribution. And she paved the way for us. She, she made the rest of the world aware of the wealth of talent, the wealth of the beautiful music we make in Africa, in South Africa. So in that way, I think she meant a lot to me and to a lot of other people. She wasn't somebody who just felt music was there to entertain. She was somebody who felt that rhythm was a way she could wed her cosmos. Rhythm was a way she could wed spirituality because for all the terrible things that happened in her life, music was always the thing that kind of gave her soothe her. It was also the thing that soothed her people back home. And this is where the co-choreographers, Tandy and Zix, actually helped me to see the angle in which it's going in terms of the spiritual core of the Sangoma. We had to follow the story. We had to actually make our own research other than just, you know, reading the, the, the script. The script. Yeah. So we had to find out ourselves as to who Mamira is. And sadly, South Africans don't know much about this woman. She, she's done a lot. I'm not a dancer. But when I, see, when I see people move and the things that they can do and all the choreography, uh, obviously I enjoy the singing the most, but for me, the dancing. I absolutely love the dancing. It actually showed me it, it, the difficulties about being a woman in the industry. It didn't start yesterday. It, it's been there long, you know, so I've learned so much about that. I love telling that story. The show is going to be coming to the University of Missouri in the fall, in September. And from there, it's going to go to New York uh, at the Scroble Auditorium at New York University. And it's going to be there from September through the month of October. I will be taking part in the USA part of this play, and I am very, very excited, yes. Definitely, I'll be taking part in the USA, and I'm looking forward for it. And all the leaders of the world, would you act differently? Playing Miriam has been a learning experience. You know, she's somebody that I would have liked to meet at some point, but obviously that, that will never happen. So. Playing her feels like the closest thing to that. I've learned so much about her life, what she went through, things that I actually didn't know. I've got so much more insight. Um, and it's also, it's, it's, it's also quite daunting because she is such a, a, a well-loved and well-known figure. Welcome back. It sounds like such an incredible experience. Yeah. I mean, yeah. wow, that woman has really changed the musical industry in so many she different has. ways. Oh, Miriam, yes. it's so great to have her celebrated, I think, in so many ways. She's amazing. Oh, yes, Do you love her music? 
Oh, a lot. I've, lo I've loved it, you know, for, for many years. Yeah. 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 So. Now, you're, you're very keen on community development, and I, and I yes. read in your memoir that you still work with the beekeepers and the bee people. Yes. Yeah. It, it's, a, it's a project that uh, I, I started uh, for rural women in the Eastern Cape. You know, I sent them for beekeeping training and then came back and got funds uh, for them from various organizations. Um, and then we, we started, that, that, that was more than 10 years ago. Yeah. So it's been running ever since, and they manage it themselves, you see, and uh, yeah, they owned and operated themselves. So you call wow. lots of people honey, basically, uh, yeah. in so many different ways. Uh, I must actually ask you, because a lot of creatives who we've spoken to who yeah. are as well known as you are, and who have done incredible work from on multiple levels, uh -huh. what is the driving force in your soul, in your spirit, that says, hey, I want to work this hard to do these amazing things? What is that spirit that keeps driving you? Where does uh -huh. it come from? It is the void that she was asking the me void. about. You create to fill this void, yeah. mm. you see. Um, and, and, and of course, it continues like that. Mm. You are driven by the, by, by the art itself, you know, because as, as I was saying, it demands uh, to, to be told. Mm. If you don't do that, then you'd certainly run mad. Yeah, wow. you can imagine. Wow. Yeah. Whoa. We asked you for questions and comments on social media for Professor Zaks and Da, mm. iconic author and playwright. And on Facebook, Ovayo Bura says, a question to Mr. Zakes is, what message could you give to us young people who want to follow in the same footsteps? Well, I mean, you can all, only follow in my footsteps, perhaps, say, as a writer, only if you write, I mean, you know? Yeah. Yes. And not or, or just wish to be a writer. You actually do it. To do it. Mm. Yeah. yeah, but of course... You know, uh, to be a great writer, you first need to be a great reader. Uh, you, so you need to read a lot, you know. Mm. Yeah. Mm. It, it is the same with all the other arts I'm involved in, you know. But another thing, of course, um, many people, many of us want to take shortcuts. Yeah. You know, I, I think training is very crucial, mm. you see. I started writing before I had any, tra any training, you know, some of my early work. But then, even though, I was already getting established without that training. I went for training, you know, mm. and I would like to think that it did enrich my craft, mm -hmm. you know. Mm. Something I always wanted to ask you, and yes. I think it's something that a lot of people, I'm, I'm browsing through the social, social yeah. sites, and I saw that on Twitter there was a question that was exactly mine. It's, okay. you, you mentioned about filling the void, but I saw Azola on Twitter says, yeah. what are you hoping to leave behind to the kids who are looking up to you? Because there's a difference between filling your own void and yeah. wanting to say, hey, there's a legacy I want to leave behind. Well, I mean, that, that, that can't be determined by me. The future will, will determine that. All the work that I've, I've, I've created, perhaps it will leave, you know, uh, uh, it will be some legacy that remains. But perhaps some of it, you know, will, will die with me, who knows? Yeah. You know, it is something that as an artist you can't determine. Yeah. Mm. There were many famous artists, uh, you know, who died a hundred years ago, who we, 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 we never hear of, mm. you know. But there are others who died a hundred years ago who, are st who we still, you know, I mean, whose art we still consume up to this day, you know? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And there are many artworks that they did produce that aren't being seen and we don't even know about necessarily. Exactly. Yeah. You yeah. see? Interesting. We did mention hmm. earlier that we're giving away a signed copy of Zakes and Dow's book, Little Sons. All you have to do is SMS the keyword books, your name, and city to 33728. Mm. SMSs cost 150. T's and C's a fly and can be found on afternoonexpress.co.za. After the break, it's time for Winner Home on Afternoon Yay. Express. And today we're chatting to a renowned and incredible wallpaper artist and surface designer, Robin Sprung. Don't we'll go anywhere. Right It's time for Winner Home Right Here After an Express. Welcome back. This is where three talented young design contestants turn three empty apartments into dream homes at the Polo Village at the Valdivia Estate State in the Cape Winelands. And the best part is that you, the viewer, stand a chance of winning one of the completed apartments valued at over 3 million rand. It's absolutely amazing. So today we're joined by Robin Sprung, who creates custom designer and photographic wallpapers, printed canvases, fabric prints, vinyl wall tattoos, and many other surfaces, uh, particularly that he likes to design on. 
and conceptualized too. He's been in the business for more than 10 years and his work has represented uh, South Africa. He's been in the UK, Australia, Netherlands, USA and Germany. You name it, he's been there. Welcome to The Loft, Robin. Thank you very much. Nice to be here. Cool. So it's, I, I always ask all of the artists that come into our loft, don't you think our place is very pretty? Do you think it doesn't Script. need any... Wallpaper. It's great. Needs a little bit of wallpaper. So you've, got a, you've got a few <laughs> course, pieces, a piece behind me. Of course you me. would say that. That's of course great. you would. Yeah. Let's talk a bit about wallpaper art yeah. and design because I think a lot of youngsters like to get into uh, graphic design and maybe to work in interior design. Yeah. How did you find yourself in wallpaper art? I actually started off as a photographer, so I worked um, photographing a lot of stuff, for landscapes, and, uh, and I, had, I had so much imagery, and I, and I kind of always had that feeling that I was giving my stuff away for the cost of the shoot. Mm -hmm. So I started collecting a lot of um, landscape images, different types of textures, different type of um, really nice sort of funky images, and we were yeah. doing something different. So I, I, used, I started off with those images, and I, and, I, and I felt that just printing a picture and putting it in a frame on the wall was a bit silly. Why not do the whole wall? Yeah. So digital technology was starting to evolve at that time, and uh, a friend of mine said, come, to my, come play with my, some yeah. of my machines, and we did. Here you are. Yeah. A massive success. Uh, something that I find quite interesting, obviously, is the fact that wallpaper was a big thing back in the day. And I think in the 90s and 80s or something, it was a really massive thing, wallpapers and trying to get graphics on the wall. And then it sort of moved more towards paints and colors and simplicity. And now wallpaper is back. It's the new trend. Um, why has it moved in that direction? And is it a big thing at the moment in interior design worlds? I think the, the whole printing industry has completely evolved. In the old days, um, the, you know, to set up wallpaper printing companies, it, 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 it was a huge, big process. It was lather printing. It was a different a silk screen printing. Yeah. So these days, with, te with digital printing, you can do anything, and you can do it in a very small quantity. So you can print just as much as you need. You don't have to set up screens and uh. jigs. And so it's become accessible for people. It's become accessible for designers to start designing. It's become easy for them to just sort of like spend some time on the computer put it out there and yeah. then they've got, they've got, they can digitally print or do yeah. vinyl cutting or whatever it is that they need. So those, obviously, I want to get people out of the mindset of thinking that it's only about wallpaper, which is, i.e., something that you can pull off a peel for and stick onto the walls. And there's more to it. There's a whole bunch of vinyls that you can use. There are different textures, different mediums that you can use. I mean, you've worked a lot in, in, in various uh, different types and forms, but what is your expertise line and, and what are the options to us available instead of doing paint? Yeah, I think wall wallpaper's always one. Um, there's vinyl printing, which means that you can go into glass, you can go into any flat surfaces. With, um, th there's now people that are even experimenting on, on, on so surface prints that you can do for exteriors. Um, you can do things on, you can, you, you can pretty much, the, it's endless. Any, any type of print, yeah. there's even people that are printing using water where you can prints onto a helmet. Sure. So it's That's absolutely crazy. endless these days. Yeah, you've also worked in places like nightclubs, you've worked in restaurants, you've right. worked in doctor's rooms. I mean, yes. the different applications for all of those, yes. and everyone has something different. Let's talk through some of these images. So this nightclub that you've done over here. This was a nightclub that we did, and um, the, the clients asked us, that, that it was called Harem, and they wanted it to feel like a harem. It's mm -hmm. in Johannesburg. They, they, they wanted it to feel like it was a really nice, um, sort of like, uh, when you go in, there's lots of girls with their sort of Arab things. So yeah. we, 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 we did these curtains where, where we printed onto the fabric, sure. and then we, we sort of, we did these behind the couches. You can see the, the the eyes, and um, that was that was the that was the brief for that. We also did glass tops with um, for the bar tops where yeah. we where we did these sort of painted hands, sure. and so that was holding the glasses. And then we did all the sort of logo designs on all the different on all the different sure. tabletops. So we were There's given so quite much a that free you can do. So much so that you much. can do. A lot of uh, properties also like to collaborate with the sort of wallpapers or designs and the paint colors. And how do you find that balance? How do you, how do you really, what comes first? Furniture, wallpaper, paint, wallpaper. How does it all work out together? I think furniture's got to go first. I think you've got to get your mood right. You've got to get, you've got to, get to know what sort of space you want it to be. And then it's a lot easier for us to sort of f see what, what, what's possible. Mm. Once, you, once you've chosen your colors, once you've chosen your mood, then we can suggest, look, are we going to do a, a photographic print? Are we going to do? Are we going to do patterns? Are we going to do something like that? And then that sort of that sort yeah. of helps you build up your story. And I think sure. jumping the gun and trying doing a wallpaper and then trying to adapt your furniture to is going to be quite a difficult quite process. Quite a difficult process. You're brilliant yeah. at what you do. I must say, I'm really, really like inspired by the work that you do. And Thank it's exciting much. to have you on the couch because yeah. one of our contestants for Winner Home has already. They've had one day, and the first thing he's done, Rudolf, has yeah. come to visit you, and you guys have started to collaborate. Yes, that's right. You know, we met him, and then he asked us to do a wallpaper for him. 
we pretty much, uh, one of my junior designers actually sat until four o'clock in the morning doing this sort of contour design for him. And it's been great working with him. It's, uh, we're very happy to be part of the, the, the Valdivie Polo Estate. In fact, we're doing another massive home in, in, uh, at the sure. moment while we speak. Um, so it's been, it's been awesome. a really nice relationship. Well, I'm glad that the relationship is there because Valdivie is a beautiful estate and you guys have taken a lot of inspiration from there. So from yes. what I've heard from Rudolf's progress, he's really excited to incorporate what Valdivie's got. So it's cool to have you on part of, the, uh, on part of that project. Also cool to have you to chat about the importance of, of looking after your home and making it look beautiful. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Robin. It's Good to pleasure. have you on the show with us. Thank so we're you. honored and excited to have Winner Home right here on Afternoon Express. You'll see our three design contestants gradually transform three properties at the Valdivia Estate using finishes provided by Caesar Stone and Plascon. Judging their work and rena is renowned architect uh, Stefan Antony and result from Plascon and Simon Bray from Private Property. You could win one of the finished apartments valued at over 3 million rand in the grand prize competition. To find it, go to privateproperty.co.za. Winner Home is proudly brought to you by Private Property in association with Nedbank. Now after the break we put to the finishing touches on our lemon curd ricotta cake. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Something delicious has been cooked up in the kitchen today. Sonia Edridge mm. is with us from The Larder and she's making us something so amazing. It's a lemon curd and ricotta cake. We've put this in the oven uh, at 180 degrees if I'm not uh -huh. mistaken. For... Or 160 on fan if you've got a Ooh. fan oven. I'm not a fan. But I don't have a fan in my oven at home, to be honest. It's, it's one of those. So uh, so you put it in the oven, it's come out looking delicious. What's left? Uh, I wish you guys could just smell this. It just smells very like scratch and sniff oh, on the like television. A, it's yeah, incredible. It's like a newly, I, I always used to trick people on the old shows to work with. I used to make them rub the little thing yeah. in the corner of the screen and say, you can smell the dish making, just rub the corner. And they did it. I'm not even joking, people did it. Oh. Yeah, don't I do that on could, I show. wish you could, I wish you could. Yeah. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to make the lovely topping. Um, so we've got this gorgeous um, ricotta, which is an Italiano cheese. It's absolutely <gasps> divine. This was cheese served in the south of Italy. Everywhere we went, we'd always order the ricotta when it came to charcuterie board or whatever it was oh, it's heaven just with olive oil like that on some delicious like bruschetta or something it's just heaven. the most phenomenal oh. cheese we sometimes put uh, we make a bit of chilli oil put a bit of lemon and mint in it and then drizzle over and oh, delicious. Also just smear it onto some sourdough but we're not it's using just... it in those ways today we're using it on our cake How well are we if you do have that? any leftover yeah. you can use it for that <laughs> so we've got the rest of our lemon curd also about four tablespoons and okay. we're just going to so I've given the ricotta a little bit of a, a stir just to because um, it's got quite a sort of coarse texture yes. crumbly texture so I've just given it a bit of a a stir, just, a to stir help. just to help yeah, smooth the tree. So your ricotta is, it's not sweet at all. It's, okay. quite, it's quite a neutral cheese. It is quite a, no, don't use the word bland, but it is no, neutral. Yeah, I like yeah, that word neutral. much better. Yeah. Yes. So you can turn it into anything you want. If you mm. want sweet or savory. Mm. So we're just going to give it a, a nice old swirl. I actually prefer not to mix it up too much. Too much. So you get because you get that beautiful texture. Yeah. And every time we take a bite, it's like a little bit more lemon or slightly less lemon. Exactly. Good idea. And then we you just claim we're spending too much time together. Uh, <laughs> Okay, mm. let's put it there. And you can double this recipe, beautiful, make it an even higher one and have a layer on the inside. Ah. Oh, yummy, it looks yeah, so amazing. Then... I think it's the nice thing, obviously, about having lemon is that it reminds you of summer all the time. It's fresh, it's full of flavor, and mm. it's like having a massive poppy seed cupcake, but a uh, poppy seed muffin, but in a cake. It's in a delicious. Cake. And then we're gonna, we can, you can have sliced lemon on top just to okay. pretty it up. And then we're ready to slice. Okay. Ready well, should we head over to the table and take a yeah. treat to everybody? I exactly. think so. You're I think it's a good take idea. The, take the plunge and carry it. I'll take it with me. But I also understand that uh, ricotta cheese is made with whey, not the curd. Yes. Is that true? So. Look at me, I'm learning so. things. Wow. Cool. Oh. There you go, ladies and gents. This looks, this looks good. Oh, I mean? mm. Doesn't it? Yeah. I feel like mm. I've forgotten this very important part of this. Yeah. Which is a knife. A knife. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll have to just look at it and go, ah, oh, mm. Smell it. Mm. Smell it. Yeah. Well, could we use fork? a fork? Yes, let's be creative. We talk about creative here. Yeah. Like uh -huh. yeah. 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 with fork, but I'll let's do it. try. Mm. I'll do it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see if this works out further. I think everyone at home is going like, oh, we're sitting at the edge of our seats. You know, Will Bonnie make it? All uh, of us food stylists, we always use a fork to cut cakes. Okay. The, oh, you know, knives, yeah, are, knives yeah, are overrated. Totally. <laughs> totally. Get a much better texture. I'd love you guys to tell us what you think about the cake because it is, it's, it's super, super delicious. It smells amazing. All the little parts that I'd stuck my fingers into mm. all smells so good. And you can make Ooh. this with orange if you don't have lemons. You can there add a bit of cardamom oh, into it. It's good ideas. Divine. Well, wow. make sure you guys join us again tomorrow for Afternoon Express and make sure you get here early particularly because during the 
the what, first 15 some... minutes of the yes. show, we're on the couch with seasoned yes. actor David Rees to chat about his new role in Sieven Delan. And for dinner, we're making a four cheese uh, ragotti, mm. ra, rigatoni mm. pasta. Rigatoni pasta. Rigatoni. Sticking with the Italian theme and the cheese today on mm. Afternoon Express. Wow. Guests, thank you so much for joining us on the show yeah, today. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Oh, thank great you. Thanks for having us. Oh, what a great it's Tuesday. A great pleasure. Have a good rest of your evening, South Africa. Good night. You're amazing. Happy amazing. eating. You're amazing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 thank you. Coming up tomorrow on Afternoon Express, veteran actor David Reese joins us to chat about his new role on SABC 2 Seven Delan, along with the cast of his brand new family on the show. The hottest address on TV is Winner Home on Afternoon Express. Proudly brought to you by Private Property in association with Nedbank. Another feel good production. Hi, YouTubers. Thank you so much for watching. Your support means the world to us. Join the Afternoon Express family by subscribing to our channel right here. And we'll keep you up to date with all our recipes and, of course, our fabulous episodes. Also, feel free to leave a comment and share this video. We do love it when you express yourself.